Today in the house, we have Annette Framberton. She is a transformational coach, licensed brain health trainer by Dr. Amen, and she's also a neuroencoding specialist trained by Joseph McClendon III. Welcome, Annette. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. So please let me ask, what has inspired you to become a neuroencoding specialist, a life coach? It's been my own personal experiences and understanding in my late 20s, the power of having a coach and a mentor and how that can really impact and change someone's life for the better. Where I was at that time, I was really struggling and I didn't know anything about personal development or how to find someone to guide me in what I needed. Mm -hmm. So um, years later, I gifted myself a ticket to a live event um, to see Tony Robbins and this force of nature named Joseph McClendon III <laughs> came on stage and I, and I was like, who is that? And um, since then I just followed him and anyone that knows his story, he's been able to you know, impact millions of lives around the world. And um, pretty much like, let's say seven years later, I was at another live event where he was at and I was there again for myself. And he asked me, um, there was a question exercise that we did and it was very, very personal. And I took the chance of raising my hand and he picked me and um, it was literally standing up in front of a room of many people answering this question. And it just opened up a, a whole new world to me as far as like shame and some things I had built up, even though I was on this journey, I still had like this missing link and he just helped me expose that within me and then being able to share that with people and how that impacted others and my story. It just, it, something happened, a switch came, a switch happened and I figured, and um, he helped me understand that my message and my journey can also help others along the way, so. And now, today. Sh share with me, like, what was that feeling whenever you raised your hand and you were picked? Oh, um, I was terrified. I was terrified. I, I really didn't want to share that, but I knew that it was part of the process, right? Mm -hmm. And many of us have some things that build up or we feel like, oh my God, um, if, I, if I say this about myself, you know, what are people going to think? And... Mm -hmm you have to let it be known your story so that maybe someone else that's like holding that in or, or doesn't even know how to face the challenge they're having within themselves being able to expose that also so you just never know something you say and how that can literally just that one person that one individual completely change their lives for the better so yeah they can benefit just they can benefit from you know one phrase you said you know and I think that's yeah that's powerful if, if you're willing to share the story so that's amazing that you were strong enough to mm -hmm. to share um so how do you start creating uh change in people so with with the story that I had um, and now being able, now being trained by Joseph McClendon III and, and Dr. Amen in the topics of brain health and neuroencoding, coming across my own experiences and how I did not know as a young teenager what was happening with me. And to give you the backstory of it, I had just you're not from New York but if you ever visited New York just imagine imagine being on a busy tra train and I'm dressed for work you know suit briefcase everything and I'm holding on to the pole because it's a crowded train so I'm holding on to the pole and all of a sudden this feeling of like 
overwhelmed, nervousness, sweat, cold sweats. I, I couldn't, I couldn't catch my breath. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, what is happening right now? What, like, what is going on? And I'm about to pass out. So I don't like any, you know, uh, a part of me does not like to ask for help, right? That's, that's something I need to work on. So holding on to the pole and literally about to pass out because my breathing is shallow, nervousness, dizziness, cold sweats. And I just close my eyes literally at the point where I couldn't see because if you're not getting enough oxygen to your brain, you're about to pass out. I lost my sight for a second and I just blurted out, can someone please help me? Can someone please help me? Can someone please help me? So someone would grab my hand and they'll say, okay, what, are you okay? Do you want to sit down? And I would just say, no, I just want to get off the train. So <laughs> they would help me onto the platform and, you know, Miss Annette have to have my composure. I would say, I'm fine. You know, they would make sure that I'm stable and I would say, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just going to take a minute, you know, and I would get right back on the next train and, um, you know, keep it. Was, keep it was this a consecutive thing or is that just one time that happened? It, it would have, it happened the first time it happened. I brushed it off. I completely brushed it off. Didn't tell anyone about it. Just brush it off. Then it happened again. So it wouldn't happen often. It would happen sporadically. So another time that it happened, it was like, okay, I should go get checked. I should find out what, what's going on, if there's something going on. Go to the doctor. She does all the physical exams. She says, we don't, you know, there's nothing. Your blood pressure's fine, you know. So I said, okay. Brushed it off again. You know, kept, kept mm -hmm. about my life. And um, so when those things would happen, I would just brush it off. A panic attacks to anyone feels like a lifetime. Like it feels like it might be seconds or minutes, but it feels like it's hours. I mean, you literally feel like you, you, you completely lose control over your, your physical, you know, um, and there's, there's like, oh my God, um, does anyone know? Is anyone going to see me? Where is this going to happen? Any moment this could happen, you know, and I, and as a professional, um, in the field of accounting, I did not want anyone to know, friends, family, anyone, coworkers. So going through that and in my mid twenties, losing my mother really took me through a path of um, depression. And that, that journey was more, of, again, just like panic attacks or just like anything that I've experienced in childhood I always shut things out. Like I just shut it out and I, I keep, I kind of like, um, how do you say it? You stack them probably. I said, I, you yeah, try I, to hide them because you're an overachiever. Right. So, so in that, in that it does, it wasn't, it wasn't serving me, but I thought that it was like, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an honor student. Um, I'm an achiever where I got my own apartment at a young age. Um, I can help my mother when she needs it. Um, you know, I have this, this great career in accounting and all these things that people feel that um, is their identity. But when there's turmoil going on inside that you never address, it will literally impact your psychological state and your physical state. And that's what happened. It was just not addressing what I needed to address at the time. And it two or three years after losing her with the anxiety and the depression, just like, boom, I exploded and I had a nervous breakdown. And a full breakdown where I had no choice but to ask for help um, after an incident in an emergency room with a nurse where I did not even know what was happening. She said, hey, have you ever heard of anxiety and panic attacks? And I was like, no. And she said, well, I'm going to uh, refer you to a therapist. And I was like, but that would mean, isn't that mental health? And she said, yes. And I was just like, oh, no, no, that not me, not me, not the overachiever. <laughs> so, have I, yeah, have my life together, not me. 
Oh no. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so that took me on a path of, of um, you know, I said, okay, I was open to seeing a therapist and, and seeing what that was about. And even with that, that's when I started having those conversations with family and friends and coworkers. And it took me a moment of like, I didn't want discomfort. I didn't want to have those conversations because I didn't want people to know. But once I did, it opened up a whole nother world of like, wow, I'm not in this alone. There are people who suffer from this, or there are people who had this experience, or there are people who don't understand what this is. Yeah. So, um, what ended up happening was in one of my visits, because it, it got to a point where I literally was so afraid to leave my house. I was afraid to be alone, number one, and I was afraid to leave my home because I didn't know when these things, when these attacks would happen again. So um, my, I did put my family through a, a strain because it was like, wow, what's happening with the net, you know? Mm-hmm. They didn't understand what was happening with the net. So with that being said, one of the appointments that I had uh, when I sat with my therapist, he said, I said, so, you know, he said, so what's this fear? You know, this build up fear of now, you know, leaving the house. And I said, I just don't want to have one of those things happen to me again outside. And he said, and, and he said, and what about like being alone? What's going on there? And I said, I'm scared. I'm afraid. I don't know. I don't know when this is going to happen to me again. And, and then he said, but you know what, Annette? I said, I, I have one, one, one question I need to know for myself. Can I die from this? I guess that's the fear that I'm just going to have one of these things and I'm going to die. So he said, no, not that I know of. I've never heard of someone dying from a panic attack. Unless you have an underlying issue, then, you know, of mm -hmm. course, but a, uh, dying from a panic attack, no. And so I said, oh, really? I can, you saying I can go home tonight and whatever happens, I'm just, just, I'll be okay. You're going to be okay. So with that being said, that just gave me the push to say, okay, I can do this, right? Mm -hmm. And went home, did us, uh, you know, went through the next few days feeling better, feeling stronger. And then I became this mad scientist as to what is happening. What is this? Why? Why did this happen to me? What are my triggers? Reading books, I would go to Barnes and Nobles. And so it just took me on this path of like, okay, understanding, discovery for myself. And what is it that I can do about it? So that led me to the personal development thing also with getting better but also mindset right yes. not understanding that my thoughts and my actions were affecting how I can move forward so first of all let me say you know I'm sorry you lost your mom at an early age you know in your 20s that's early and let me applaud you and I admire that you took care of that anxiety problem you know because I was I was I love to listen to Dr. Amen and he said you know our brain is just another organ you know if we have heart issue we go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes what we need to do to heal our heart or our belly or any other organ that we're having problems with but whenever it comes to our brain and like you were talking about like those thoughts and that leads into emotions you know, sometimes we ignore it. Like you said, you were an over it. You are an overachiever, and and you didn't think, yo, that could happen to me, or you just blew it off, blew it off until it built up, and then boom, you know, you had to do something about it, and you did. Uh, so I admire you for that, for uh, taking care of your brain, and now it leads you to a beautiful path. But it is, you know, uh, personal development. Now we, you get to educate others about your story so that's amazing that is and now amazing. i'm honored to be someone who's trained under both joseph and dr amen to help people around the topics of brain health and neuro encoding it's so powerful yes i bet you use it every day <laughs> oh yes absolutely <laughs> yes so what is your outcome 
whenever you are coaching someone? Um, being in coaching someone, it's being more of a guide, right? So I believe that if I would have had more of a guide into getting to the point of healing and knowledge and what I can do for myself earlier on, it would have saved me years, years of, of trying to figure it all out. And um, so in coaching someone, it's, it's, you know, peeling back the layers like an onion and seeing what their challenge might be. And it, it doesn't necessarily need to be panic attacks and anxiety. There are challenges, whether it's um, procrastination, whether it's loss of identity, whether it's um, feeling not enough, whatever it might be, there is a core reason for that. And the work that goes into finding what that is for that person and then taking them on the journey through coaching as to what is it they can do to have it in their system. Like not just like something they know, but something they do yeah. and the activities so that they have it in their system so that lasting change is there. Okay. Now did you figure it out why your anxiety began or where it, where it comes from? I believe now, now after years of um not having them that it was <laughs> yeah it that's was, good it was self-care number one like um understanding what's going on within me and what i can do to prevent them from happening okay. now what might have brought them on I believe was as a child, there were some things that happened and whether it was, you know, people say, oh, I have a dysfunctional family. I had dysfunction in the family, um, you know, and my parent, my parent, I loved them. I, I was loved. I had a lot of love, but my parents did the best they could with the resources that they had and resources doesn't mean materialistic. It means they're upbringing and their filters and their beliefs and how they managed um, things that came across in life for them. So as a child in the home, I know that I also shut things out, shut things out in the sense of like, okay, this is happening. And um, there was the hero mentality of like, I have to save everyone. So it was like always showing up, showing up, showing up for others. And then who should, who showed up for me? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it was something where I believe my mother even had panic attacks or some type of neurological breakdown at some points that I witnessed, but I don't know what that was. And then back then you didn't hear about anxiety attacks and, and this and that or depression or anything like that. So I believe experiencing some of the things I did as a young child and then into, a, into the teenage years, that escape that I would have as to um, burying myself in whether it was school. I was an A student. And then sometimes I think like, how did I do that? How did I, <laughs> how did I get through all of that <laughs> and, and still achieve what I did? And it was that I would shut things out and bury myself in something else. So, it was, so I believe like neurologically, um, whether I was a nervous kid because of things that happened around me or whatever it might've been, my nervous system didn't escape it. Yeah. Right? It yeah. I kept escaping it in my mind, but the, it was in my nervous system. And as I grew up and I had my own challenges and things that I came across, it just, you know, if you don't deal with them, it's just going to keep stacking, stacking, stacking until you, you know, unfortunately you see yourself in a, in a position that it's like, wow, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. So you develop a defense mechanism. I was mm -hmm. like, and yeah, yeah, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. And, and now that we're learning is like, we know that that's no healthy, you know, because I, 
I, I am the queen about disconnecting, you know, I'm an immigrant. So I had to learn to disconnect. So I hear you and, and it's not, it's not serving me now. It's like, I, now I know that it's not serving, you know, we're here to love, we're here to share, we're here to connect. Uh, but because of experience, life experiences and we just don't know, which is our defense mechanism is like, okay, we'll just shut down. We, we disconnect and well, that's good. I mean, that is very, that's a really, aha moment whenever you discover those pieces of the puzzle that will allow you to write you know and help others so that's amazing uh what are some of uh strategies and techniques you use on your coaching style oh there's so many but um again it, it starts with with the client and, and helping them discover what it is their challenges might be and um, coming up with a strategy and a plan that excites them and something because if they're not excited about the change it's not going to stick right so mm -hmm. Joseph talks about he has this poem is called it says as I think so I feel as I feel so I do as I do so I have and that's just, a, it's so simple if you think about the components of that and what actions we take for ourselves is what is going to cause the change in us. So some of the strategies, one of them is there's an anchoring process that we have. And, and that's literally, we can be so unresourceful and, and be in this funk and, and just like, um, have this heaviness about life and that definitely doesn't serve us either so but there are things that we've done and experienced that just brightens us up and that we can remember that we've done and things we've we breakthroughs that we've had or accomplishes that we've had right so bringing someone back to that moment to those experiences and having them do that over and over so that when they are, when these things do come up that feel, that feel heavy, you're not there long, right? You might have a moment, you're human. There's no way of like not having these moments, but not being stuck in them is priceless. And another thing, um, there's a stop technique. So to sum that up really quick, it's like if you're unresourceful and then getting out of that, and then celebrating, celebrating the fact that you took the moment to uh, stop yourself. And it just, it just does something to your nervous system that literally you will see the lasting change. It's pretty amazing. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. We don't celebrate enough. So that is beautiful. Uh, who can benefit from your coaching style? anyone <laughs> <laughs> I love it yeah I mean anyone anyone that's coachable right anyone, anyone that's coachable and has a commitment to themselves uh -huh. that is good I like it and how can we find you I'm on social media here on Facebook Instagram LinkedIn um I do just, you know on Netrem Ratson and I have a Calendee link that we can um connect with this and someone can set up a 15 minute call and we can go through some discoveries and some strategies and see if uh, we're a good fit to move further faster yes awesome i love what you have to offer uh especially with your life experience you know that that you are teaching what you lived so that's amazing what book what book has added the most value in your life Oh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, the cover or the title might make someone think it's all about money, but it's not. It's, it is about wealth, yes, but wealth in the sense of having a good life, relationship, um, being successful in what it is, your, your, um, your career, um, serving, mindset i mean there are so there's there are 15 principles in that book that are just so powerful and um reading it as a book 
No, you read it as a textbook, like literally chapter per chapter, you can get so much value and even do things in that book. Also, there are things you can implement into your life and, and see a change for the better. And I love that I went to a um, event with Bob Proctor. There was like the 55th um, celebration of him being a person, you know, this um, in personal development. And he had his original copy that was like literally in shreds, it looked like, but he, you know, he says, I mean, many people in the industry talk about that book and how powerful it is and life-changing it can be. So um, that, that was pretty cool to see that. I have not read the book, so that will be my next purchase. <laughs> I will read it. I will read I it. Recommend it. I, yes. Now, before you go, please share or give us an advice for any person out there that is watching or listening to this video that is dealing with anxiety. What would you tell them? I would say that as challenging as it might be and as scary as it might feel, there are things you can do to eliminate them. And maybe they won't go away right away, but you will see a change with things you do, um, how you feel about certain things and diminishing the fear over them. That I think the fear alone of going through them, all the symptoms, all the physical things that you feel put you into the spiral of like, oh my God, I can't breathe. Oh my God. You know, and, and that alone, like there is a way to stop it on the onset if you understand what your triggers are. I promise you, it works. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you for your knowledge and for just stopping by and sharing your story. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Blessings. We'll see you all soon. Okay.